Hey, what's up you guys? Ben here. The watch market has been skyrocketing the past couple months, particularly with brands like Rolex, Patek's, and APs. It's gotten so high to the point where it's really hard to justify the value in these prices. But even the watches like the Patek Nautilus, AP Royal Oak, and the Rolex Skydweller are small fry in terms of price compared to the 10 watches that I'll be going over today. Today, I'll be going over 10 of the most expensive watches ever sold in history. Most of the brands listed here should be familiar to you. Uh, some pieces are quite predictable, but some are pretty surprising to say the least. I'll be starting with the lowest price watch and gradually move up to the most expensive. By the way, I want to wish everyone a happy new years and I hope everyone is having a great holiday season with their family and friends. Let me know in the comment section down below what watch you guys rock for the holidays. Also, don't forget to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, and turn on the notification bell. I upload watch related content on a weekly basis, so I really appreciate your support. The number 10th on my list, which is priced at $5 million, is the Hublot Big Bang encrusted in factory baguette diamonds. The watch case itself is a pretty large 44 millimeters in diameter. It's made out of 18 karat white gold and it's covered with 1,282 diamonds in total. 302 of those diamonds are on the case, 179 diamonds are placed on the dial, and 782 diamonds are placed in the bracelet. God, just how many more diamonds could they have added? This Hublot and factory bust down is too big and flashy to be worn by most, but I imagine royalty or rappers wearing watches like this, which is funny because this watch was sold to Beyonce, who later gifted this watch to Jay-Z, her husband, for his 43rd birthday. I'm not a hater of Hublot or anything like that, but even if I did have $5 million laying around to spend on a watch, I don't think I'd pull the trigger on this one. It looks a little too flashy, no, little is an understatement, it looks way too flashy and kind of gaudy for my personal liking. The number 9 on the list might be a little more outdated, but it's much more elegant. The watch in question is a Vacheron Constantine 57-60 for $8 million. This watch has 57 complications, which includes multiple calendars, a double retrograde split seconds chronograph, a tourbillon, and much more. There are over 2800 parts included in this watch, and the casing is made out of 18 karats white gold. This watch was finished by a single craftsman who used advanced finishing techniques to create this masterpiece. I'm not a big fan of pocket watches, but this is something that will compel me much more than the previous Hublot. It probably took the artisan years to complete this, and the fact that this watch single-handedly has more complications than all the watches in my collection, probably all of our collections for that matter, means something. The number 8 on the list is a Patek Philippe reference number 1518, and it sold for an impressive $11.1 .1 million. The Patek 1518 was introduced in 1941 during the Second World War. The reason why it's so expensive and special is because it was the first watch to contain a chronograph within a perpetual calendar complication. Unlike the other two watches prior, this watch is actually made out of steel, not gold. And there aren't too many precious metals or gems within the watch to my knowledge. Unlike the others, the reason why this watch is so expensive is mostly due to its orological significance rather than over complications or expensive gems. Moving on to number 7, most of you guys are probably familiar with this watch. The watch that I'm referring to is Paul Newman's personal Rolex Daytona, which sold for $17.7 .7 million in auction in 2017. As most of you already know, this particular Daytona was worn by the famous American actor, the late Paul Newman. This model dates back to 1968, and it was a gift to Paul from his wife. It's rumored that Newman passed this watch down to his daughter, and his daughter gifted this watch to her boyfriend, who later then they separated. And only years later, after they've been separated for a while, her ex gave this watch back to her. She auctioned the watch, and well, you guys know, it sold for millions of dollars. The auctioning of this watch, I think, is partially responsible for the rise in popularity for modern-day Rolex Daytona models. It's funny with this watch because back in the 60s and 70s, you couldn't even pay to get rid of Daytonas, but nowadays, the prices are out of control. The number 6 on this list is another diamond encrusted watch, it's the Jacob & Co Billionaire at $18 million. Needless to say, this watch was made and designed for people with FU money. This watch has over 260 carats of baguette diamonds, and it's definitely a super flashy piece. I think Floyd Mayweather has one of these in his collection. 
But for me, I'd rather purchase a Paul Newman Daytona with around $18 million rather than this piece. With that said, I do like the Billionaire a lot more than the Hublot Big Bang from earlier on in the entry. The fifth watch on this list is the most complicated watch in the world. It's the Patek Philippe Super Complication valued at $24 million. Similar to the Vacheron pocket watch from earlier, this Patek is super complicated. In fact, it remains as the most complicated watch ever built by hand. It has over 24 functions, from the perpetual calendar, to the Westminster chimes, sunset and sunrise times, the celestial map of New York, and much more. The watch is made out of 18 karat gold, and of course it took an expert artisan years if not decades to build this masterpiece. Again, I'm not a big fan of pocket watches, but if I had millions of dollars to splurge, I'd probably buy this and put this in my personal museum or something like that. The fourth on the list is by Chopard. The watch is called 201 carats, and it's valued at $25 million. Are you surprised? Another gem encrusted watch. This watch has 874 diamonds of different color and sizes. This is a women's watch to be precise, and most of its worth comes from diamonds. This is technically a watch due to its timekeeping capabilities, but I classify it closer to an opulent bracelet for women of wealth rather than a watch, per se. Now, the third watch on the list, this is a special piece. It's the Breguet Marie Antoinette, valued at $30 million. So it's another pocket watch, and even though it's not as complicated as a Patek mentioned earlier, the history of this watch makes it really special to those who collect pocket watches. This watch was made for the famous French queen, Marie Antoinette. You know, the one who said the famous quote, let them eat cake, during the French Revolution. Even though this watch was made for the queen, it was completed 34 years after her death. That should tell you how long it took Breguet to make this watch. I think it's safe to say that this Breguet is another piece that deserves to be in the museum. Anyway, for number 2 on the list, we have the Giraffe's Diamonds Fascination, valued at $40 million. This watch is covered in 114 carats of colorless diamonds, and it was designed for an ultra-wealthy woman. I don't know about you, but even if I had the money, I'm not sure if I'd ever want to splurge this much on my girlfriend or wife on what's essentially a diamond bracelet. Now, onto the most expensive watch in the world. This placing goes to the Graf's Diamonds Hallucination, which is essentially an even more blinged out version of the previous entry, and this watch is valued at $55 million. No wonder they call this the Hallucination, because it looks like you fed a unicorn a bunch of diamonds and this is what it vomited out. I don't know where the inspiration for this watch came from, but you had to have been on something to create something like this. Don't get me wrong, it's colorful, but the movement is quartz, so you can basically consider this as a super flashy bracelet. The 10 watches mentioned today are in a totally different league of their own, at least in terms of pricing, because most of us would consider a $10,000 watch purchase to be pretty darn pricey. You need to be filthy rich and then some to even be able to consider buying some of these pieces. Would you guys consider buying any of these pieces if money wasn't an issue at all? If so, which piece would you buy? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.